Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Johnson with you once again, soon to be retired Garfield High School teacher as my YouTube notoriety grows exponentially. We are in our first lecture on acids and bases. We are in chapter five of book two, looking at this section here, 5.1, identifying acids and bases, 272 of our ebook, 264 of our textbook. Let's scroll down, see what it has to offer. Turns out there's several different ways that acids and bases can be defined or can be identified. Um, I'll start with the Arrhenius theory, which is maybe uh, the way in which you've identified acids and bases in the past, but isn't how in this class we will identify or define acids and bases. According to the Arrhenius theory, uh, acids release hydrogen ions into solution and bases release hydroxide ions into solution. We've in the past known that if an ionic compound has H plus as its cation, it's an acid. And if an ionic compound has hydroxide as its anion, it's a base. That's true, but we will extend that definition um, in just a moment. So here's an example of an Arrhenius acid, hydrochloric acid, reacting with an Arrhenius base, sodium hydroxide. And when an Arrhenius acid and base react, a salt is formed, an ionic compound on water, because the H plus ion and OH minus ion combine to form water, molecular water. We, however, in this class and on the AP exam, will be using the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory or definition, which says that a substance is an acid if it donates a hydrogen ion, a proton. The same as the Arrhenius theory. But the definition for a base is different. The Bronsted-Lowry base definition is a substance or a species that accepts a hydrogen ion or pulls a hydrogen ion out of solution to form a bond, a covalent bond, with another ion and anion. So a Bronsted-Lowry acid donates a hydrogen ion to solution such that there'll be hydrogen ions dissolved, dissociated, and a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts that hydrogen ion from solution, causing a bond to be formed and pulling that hydrogen ion out of, out of solution. Here we see a reaction between an acid and a base, hydrochloric acid used once again. It's a strong acid, completely dissociates, so it'll generate hydrogen ions, they would be in solution. And in this case, interestingly, the base is water because water accepts that hydrogen ion, bonds to the hydrogen ion, forming an H3O plus ion called hydronium. Meanwhile, the chloride ion remains dissolved in water. It ends up being a spectator ion. So here we are seeing water acting as a base because it's accepting the hydrogen ion, forming a covalent bond with it, forming once again hydronium. We'll talk quite a bit throughout this chapter about hydronium. Hydronium is in fact the ion that forms when acids are in water. There aren't free floating hydrogen ions in water. Rather, they form a covalent bond with water forming hydronium. Having said that, and despite that it's true, oftentimes we will refer to hydrogen ions being dissolved in water as if they exist on their own. But in reality, they bond with water to form hydronium. So we will use hydrogen ion and hydronium interchangeably because they really mean the same thing. But do know that hydrogen ions do bond with water and form hydronium. And here we see a diagram or a cute picture describing that. The hydrogen ion forms a bond, a covalent bond with water, again forming the hydronium ion. And these two ions can be thought of as being interchangeable. Now we're looking at a a base, a Bronsted-Lowry base, a substance that accepts a proton from another substance. Ammonia, NH3, is our base. In this reaction, it is accepting or removing or bonding with a hydrogen ion from water. It's removing a hydrogen ion from water, forming ammonium, NH4+, and hydroxide. So the base is ammonia because it's accepting a proton. Water is acting as the acid because it's donating the proton. It is losing a proton. And our products, again, are the ammonium ion and hydroxide. As we look at this diagram here in yellow, we see that the products of a base reacting with an acid are, in fact, another acid and another base. Ammonia, NH3, is the base, accepting the hydrogen ion, the proton, from water the acid that has donated it. And then ammonium, in reverse, can act as an acid. It can donate that hydrogen ion back to hydroxide, the base, and in so doing be an acid. And hydroxide, the base, can accept that proton 
and act as a base. So the products of an acid-base reaction are in fact an acid and a base as well if the reaction were to happen in reverse. Down in orange, we see a statement that says that two substances that differ by a hydrogen ion are called a conjugate acid-base pair. Two substances that have the same formula, except that in one there's one greater hydrogen than the other, and the charges are different, are called a conjugate acid-base pair. Let's look above and see the two conjugate acid-base pairs. Ammonia, we know on the left-hand side, NH3 to be a base, and as it gains a proton from water, it forms ammonium. These are a conjugate acid-base pair. They differ by a proton. Ammonium on the right has one more hydrogen ion than does ammonia on the left. And its charge is one less. The conjugate acid of an acid-base pair not only has one more hydrogen in it, it has a charge that is one, I said less a moment ago, one greater. It has a one plus charge as opposed to neutral. Meanwhile, here is water on the reactant side acting as an acid, donating or losing a proton. And here is its conjugate base. It differs by a hydrogen. And again, the acid has a charge that is one greater than the base. The base has a one minus charge. Water, the conjugate acid of hydroxide, has a zero or neutral charge, one greater than one minus. Again, two substances that differ by a proton, by a hydrogen ion, are called a conjugate acid-base pair, and their charges will vary by one as well. So we're looking at sample problem 512 here on page 267 of our textbook. Question one says, in the following equilibrium, identify the acids and bases and the two conjugate acid-base pairs. So as I look at the reactant side, it looks like HF is the acid because it's losing the hydrogen ion, and CN minus is the base because it's gaining the hydrogen ion. And HF has an H to lose, CN minus doesn't. As we go to the product side, we see that HCN has one more proton than does CN minus. This is our first conjugate acid base pair. HCN is the conjugate acid, CN minus is the conjugate base. Meanwhile, when HF loses that hydrogen ion, it forms F minus. So there's our second conjugate acid base pair. F minus is the conjugate base, HF is the conjugate acid for that pair. As we go down to number two, we are asked to predict the conjugate base from this conjugate acid. This is oxalic acid, by the way. The conjugate base has one less H plus ion than does the conjugate acid. And the charge is one lesser, one less than the acid. The acid is neutral. So we're going to see H, not H2, HC2O4 with a one minus charge. One minus being one less than zero. And as we scroll down, we see that Here's the answer key, or the solution, that that's in fact what we've got. For SO32 minus the conjugate base, we need to add an H plus ion, and we need the charge to go up by one, so we're going to see HSO31 minus for the conjugate acid. And in fact, there it is. The next one is HCO3 as an acid, cancel. It's going to lose that hydrogen ion and form CO32 minus, Remember, the charge goes down by one for the base as the conjugate base. And then water, which can act as an acid or a base, we saw that already, as a base can accept a proton. And the conjugate acid is going to be HC, excuse me, H3O1 plus. The hydronium ion will be the conjugate acid of. All right, as we go to question three, we are asked to predict what the products of this equilibrium expression will be and to identify the conjugate acid base pairs. H2CO3 is the only candidate for being the acid. It's the only substance on the reactant side that has an H that it could donate, meaning NO2 will be our base. So H2CO3 is our acid, NO2 is our base. H2CO3, when it loses an H+, plus, will become HCO3 minus. And when NO2 gains that H plus ion, it'll form HNO2, and that will be neutral. And as we scroll down, we see, in fact, that those are the products. NO2 is the base. HNO2 is its conjugate acid. H2CO3 was the acid on the reactant side. And HCO3 minus is the conjugate base. I flipped the page looking at practice problem 512 here. And as you might expect what's coming, I'd like you to try this one on your own. Try one, two, three on your own. Write the solutions in your book. Pause the video, please. Come on back when you're done and see how your answers compare to mine. 
again, give this practice problem a go. All right, HO, HiO3 is our acid. Its conjugate base is IO3 one minus. NO2 minus is our base. HNO2 is the conjugate acid. HF is the acid. F minus is the base. Hc2O4 minus is the base. Here's our conjugate acid. There's our acid. There's our base. This is the conjugate acid of that base. And there's the conjugate base of our original acid. All right, so we go to two. The acid is H2O2. We need to lose an H plus ion, generating HO2, and the charge goes down, HO2, one minus. As H2BO3, when it's a base, gains an H plus ion, it'll form H3BO3 neutral. HCOH, as it loses an H plus ion, actually loses it from the front, excuse me, from the back, we'll learn why later, generating the acetate ion, HCOO minus. And then lastly, Here's C6H5O7. I think that's citrate. When it gains an H plus ion, it forms HC6H5O7 2 minus, gaining a charge as well. All right, as so we go to three, here is our acid and here is our base. Um, NH3, just start recognizing as a base, it's a weak base. It won't lose one of those hydrogen ions off the end, so that's going to be our acid. And when it loses a base, excuse me, when it loses an H plus ion, NO2 minus is our base, and ammonium, NH4 1 plus, is our acid. This is our acid, citric acid. This is our base. When the acid loses an H plus ion, you form H2, C6, H5, O7, 1 minus. And then HCN is the conjugate acid of the CN minus base. Here's our phosphate ion. It's going to gain an H plus ion, so that's the base. Hydrosulfuric acid is our acid. The conjugate acid of PO3, excuse me, PO4, 3 minus is HPO4, 2 minus. And here's our conjugate base. All right, the last thing I want to talk with you about are what are called amphiprotic species. I'm on the same page here. I've just scrolled down. And is in yellow, it reminds us amphiprotic species or substances have the ability to act as an acid or a base depending on what that substance is reacting with. Above, we see water acting as both an acid as, and a base, as an amphiprotic substance. When water acts as an acid, it will be reacting with a base. And in so doing, it'll generate hydroxide, that is the conjugate base of water acting as an acid, and ammonium, which is the conjugate acid of ammonia. Here's water acting as an acid, gaining, excuse me, losing an H plus ion. On the right-hand side, we see water acting as a base when it reacts with an acid. It's now gaining an H plus ion, and in so doing, forming the hydronium ion, and then the conjugate base of HF. In green, it tells us that for a substance to be amphiprotic, it must have a proton to donate and must be able to accept a proton, which is really a reiteration of the definition. Most amphiprotic species are anions, negatively charged ions, that also have an H in their formula. And we see some examples here. They can lose that H and, and form an ion that is more negatively charged, or it can gain an additional H and the charge goes up as we know it will. That is it, folks. Thanks for hanging in there. Remember not to pick your neighbor's flowers unless you have permission and to try to make the world a better place. I will see you soon. Take care.